name is Trey Johnson. My mom is Stella Farwell, and she and my stepdad have a unit here at Shell Point. Well, my mom and dad used to uh, literally fly me and my sister to grandma's house in Texas from New Orleans in a little Cessna Cardinal. And I totally remember looking down at the highway and seeing the cars and relating that to my little toy car track and thinking how, how it looked the same and uh, how fun it was to fly in the plane. Oddly, I did not become a pilot until I was 21, which is pretty late. Um, so so uh, there was a gap between flying as a kid and becoming a pilot. Uh, at this point, I'm retired from my flying business, but I've worked for commercial float plane operations, and I've owned and operated a number of different uh, medium-sized turbine-powered uh, jump planes, like Twin Otters and Skyvans. I used to run the planes and own the planes at Skydive to Land, which is a major drop zone that happens to be here in Florida. The idea of a rotable aircraft or flying car has been around since aviation was born. Uh, I think the first patent was issued in France for a, a flying car about two months before the Wright brothers flew. So everybody's been chasing the idea for the whole history of aviation. But for me personally, I remember being in the Air and Space Museum in Washington DC with my dad and there was a exhibit they didn't actually have a car, but they had an exhibit about the Malt Taylor Aero Car and about Robert Fulton's Airphibian, and it really stuck with me, and I thought it would just be so cool to have something like that. Then many years later, when I had time, uh, I decided I'd really like to, to have one, and I started researching what was real, and I realized that to have one, I needed to create it myself, and here it is. The name of the company is Plane Driven, so this is a Plane Driven PD-2. The base airplane is a Glass Air Sportsman, and it already has the folding wings, so that's a huge head start for us. It goes about 140 in the air, which is slower than the stock airplane because of the additional drag of our big wheels and our parts, but it's still pretty good for, for a rotable airplane. Uh, it goes about 73 on the ground, so you can cruise on the highway at 60 all day long, no problem. It gets, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but it seems to get in the low 20s on the mileage, which is okay. In road mode, it is licensed and registered as a motorcycle. It turns out that the federal regulations are, are very free if you have three wheels or less in contact with the surface. So we have a bunch of wheels, but only three are in contact with the surface. So we're able to register as a motorcycle. Uh, and I, I think of it as a motorcycle. It does not have the safety systems of a modern car like airbags and crumple zones. So uh, defensive driving is, is recommended. It has excellent seat belts and a steel cage, but uh, it's, the modern cars have become so safe. Uh, due to the weight, it can never have all that. Um, it's just one of the compromises of a rotable aircraft. But it drives extremely well. The steering is just excellent and uh, the suspension, it's, it surprises me how easy to drive it is and how good the ride is. The tail is pretty tall, so it, you, you can't quite fit it in a uh, standard single car garage, but many larger garages it'll fit in. It's about 24 feet long and about eight and a half feet wide, and the tail's a little over nine and a half feet tall. So it's big, but it's not huge. Uh, but so if you drove to the airport, uh, you'd park, and you would put the wings out and then you'd take the power pod and roll it up a ramp into the cargo area and then these pieces here change length so that you raise it up so the prop has clearance and uh, put the tail into its position take the steering wheel out put the stick in and uh, fly away so The goal is, uh, of course, not to be a daily driver, but that you would drive maybe 150 to 200 miles uh, to try to get out of some bad weather flying. So let's say you've taken off and you're trying to go to your destination and you hit uh, front. Instead of trying to punch through it, you just land at an airport and configure to drive and maybe drive 150 miles and then you could find another airport and start flying again. 
People that travel in small planes quickly learn that it's easy to end up overnighting somewhere that you didn't plan to. And that's what this is about, is uh, preventing that. The Aircraft engine is a Lycoming IO390. It's 210 horsepower and it is a stock engine driving the stock propeller. So our modifications begin with the front end. Uh, it's a tailwheel aircraft and instead of a single gear leg, we have two control arms, a steering system, and a shock unit that can change length so that we can change our ride height between the modes. As you can see, we're very, very low in the drive mode and we have to go up to the stock height in the flight mode so that the propeller has proper clearance. The tail uh, would be too wide on the road, so we had to design a way to hinge the horizontal. This is the stock tail wheel, and that just stays in place at all times, but when you land, that's the back wheel. Inside, we've got standard foot pedals for the driver. It's got a clutch, a brake pedal, and an accelerator, all where you'd expect them. Standard steering wheel and the shifter is uh, right to the right of the seat there, right where you'd expect it. In the flight mode, we take the steering wheel out, we put the stock stick in, and the rudder pedals are stock and, and, and right, right where they are on the stock airplane. In the lighting system, uh, stock airplane landing lights and strobe lights, but we've got DOT approved uh, turn signals and brake lights here and backup lights. The headlights are built into the cowling and then we have multiple turn signals. Windshield wipers required for driving and the stock airplane doesn't have that. And here's the horn. Uh, all of our modifications have been going on for about two and a half years and uh, some of the real difficult parts uh, like this front end were solved here in Fort Myers. And that is uh, really, it's simple. That's it. <laughs> Well, our intention is definitely to bring it to the market. We've been working on it about two and a half years. This is the one and only prototype so far, and it's meeting or beating the design goals in both modes. So our remaining challenge is the transition from one mode to the other. It takes mm, probably about an hour still. Uh, the design goal there is we're, we're aiming high. We want to do it in 10 minutes, one person. And uh, it seems impossible right now, but other parts of it have seemed impossible and we, we get through it. I've flown this all around the country numerous times. It's just a great little plane. I anticipated that it would be unusual on the road and that it might draw a little bit of attention, but I'm actually pleased that it, it it's just seems to make people smile. And uh, even on the way here, people were driving alongside with their cameras out and uh, it's, it is kind of fun. People seem to enjoy it almost everybody's smiling when we drive by, so it's, it's fun.